everybody, this is my 2010 Nissan Altima Hybrid. And if you're wondering why it's up on car ramps, it's because I have a rejection sticker courtesy of the state of Massachusetts. Uh, it's not a safety issue, otherwise a safety issue, once they put the rejection sticker on it, you're not supposed to drive it at all. Uh, this is an emissions issue, so I have a certain amount of time to fix it, and then I go back and they retest it. Uh, and then hopefully we'll pass. So what I've got is I've got the check engine light on uh, and uh, according to the uh, scanner it's throwing the codes which mean that there is the codes that it's throwing I forgot what the numbers are but it's basically it's a problem with the EVAP system. Uh, the EVAP system in your car basically ha it, it creates a place for gas fumes from the gas tank to be temporarily stored before they can re be recycled into the intake and burned in the engine during the combustion process. In the old days, that stuff was just left to vent out to nowhere. Then they started to get a little bit better about it and they started to add like charcoal canisters and stuff. Modern automobiles have a pretty sophisticated computer controlled system. It's, it's, it's a system with purge valves and pressure sensors so that the system can do a self-test. It can actually close valves and build pressure to ensure there are no leaks in the system. The problem is if you have leaks anywhere in the system or if your valves aren't actuating correctly, uh, you're gonna have, it's gonna fail. And that is going to be a failure of the emissions control system, at least as far as Massachusetts is concerned and many other states, I'm sure. So. I've got to figure out what's going on with this thing. The proper way to diagnose this problem is to have a, um, a controller that isn't just an OBD reader, but also is able to uh, manually, basically you send a signal and you can manually tell valves to open and close. And then you use uh, something called a smoke machine, I think, or whatever it is, it's a smoke generator. It's a doohickey that you put this chemical in and it creates artificial smoke. And you take a line off underneath the hood, you hook up this smoke generator thing, and you pump smoke into the system so that where the leak is can be visibly seen because the smoke will come out where it's not supposed to come out. You can buy uh, like low end ones online, but the problem is I'm still not going to have the ability to tell the system to open and close valves. So I'm basically going to go about this flying blind, so to speak. So it turns out that one of the biggest culprits of the uh, failures on these things is a device known as the uh, purge valve. And that is located on the charcoal canister. And in this particular car, it's a bear to get to. So I've got the car uh, up on ramps in the back. So we're gonna go underneath and I'm gonna show you why it's such a bear to get to. All right, so climbing under the rear of the car. So there's the driver's side left wheel. Driver's side rear wheel, <laughs> just to orient you. Okay, so that's looking up towards the front of the car. So there's one muffler, the other mufflers over here, the two mufflers come together right there. Alright, so this is the well for the spare tire that we're looking at right here. Alright, so if we go to the suspension component and this cross beam or whatever you want to call it here, if we get into this area right in here, it's pretty tight, there's not a lot of room at all. But stuffed up inside there, okay, I don't know if you can see it or not. See that black box right there? There's actually like two black boxes right next to each other. There's a uh, tank and a charcoal canister right next to each other. And that's the, uh, that's what we're trying to get to. In particular, if I climb in further, now you can see there's a line there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around. So now I'm laying on my back looking up. 
right up in there but I got the light on right there that is the device that I want to get my hands on uh, what you got to do to get to that valve it almost seems like it's an impossible job because of how tight this is the spacing in here you can't get your arm in there or your hand but if you take the the rear sway bar the rear sway bar brackets right here they actually unbolt There's one on each side and this bar will drop down far enough out of the way so that you can get your hand up inside there so once you unbolt that bracket you can allow the uh, bar to basically drop down the sway bar links are going to keep it from falling down any further than this but you can see what happens in the middle here is that this bar now moves from up here where it's right in your way to just down and back far enough so that you can get your arm or your hand up into this area here where you need to work then you pull the hose off of that valve there's no hose clamp on that because it's basically it's the vent hose so they don't need that to be a really tight seal so it's just pushed on once you get that off there's a little plastic clip that you push on and it allows you to rotate the valve so here's the valve I've got it out we'll, we'll take it on the bench and look at it real close but it's almost like a the way that it's made it, it twists and locks into the canister so that's where that hose I pulled that hose off of and then this just twists and unlocks and can be pulled out of the canister and then the electrical plug has a plastic tab on it that you have to actuate to get it to unplug for the plug to unplug from this thing so now I got this out and we'll look at it on the bench so right there is the plug that plugs into the uh, valve of course I took the valve off already but uh, I wanted to show you guys again because I know I used that other camera the other day which it was really difficult to get in here underneath so I'm using the GoPro today it's got a little bit more ability to give me some range so there's the hole on the uh, canister right in there you can see it up there all right so I've got it uh, here on the workbench where we can get a really good look at it look at all the rust on this thing it's a big part of I think the failure of these why this is a common failure component in the system is the fact that where it sits up there under the car I think a lot of road salt and everything gets kicked up there and just kind of sits on this thing rusting it but it's really a simple design um, it's a solenoid valve so what we've got is underneath this plastic case here there's a uh, a ferrite core that has a wire wound around it and then there's a uh, hole through the middle of it and inside there's a uh, an iron slug and what happens is that slug acts like a plunger and there's a spring inside here that keeps it out so what happens is when you uh, put 12 volts DC to these two pins that's gonna pull this open so, so you can see this is where this hooks onto the canister there's an o-ring right here all right so that's what helps make this seal and then your vent hose is here so any fumes inside that canister that need to come out through that vent line will pass right through here when this is open the way a professional mechanic will test this is he will be able to actually hook up his fancy analyzer and to the obd port or whatever you call it there and basically tell the computer to close this valve or open this valve you can you can do that so we don't have that we being me and the mouse in my pocket so instead what I'm gonna do is I have a 12 volt DC power supply and if you don't have a 12 volt DC power supply because many of you are not gonna have one you can use a battery uh, just a 12 volt battery uh, you can even use 
a small like lead acid battery that they use in uh, like those backup batteries they use in alarm systems and stuff you can even use something as simple as that because this is very low power all right just had to get a couple of jumper wires with smaller clips on them because you have to reach down a side here and make that connection all right so that solenoid is actuating it's not frozen not not a burnt open coil it's not frozen it actually seems like it's working fine the question is well there's two questions I don't know the polarity so in other words if I hook this up wrong it's not going to damage this all that's going to happen is the plunge is going to go in the wrong direction so instead of like opening it'll close or vice versa looks like the way I have it hooked up right now is the correct way because when I energize this it closes that valve however notice that when I blow through this that's wide open but when I close it you can hear air leaking so it's not sealing properly all right so the next thing I want to do is I want to buy a new one of these valves and this is the next tip I can give you do not buy this at your auto parts store all of the major chains that listed this valve as being available all wanted 60 70 80 dollars for this valve you can find this valve on eBay oh hold on back up a second so what about rock auto Used rock auto before I think the cheaper one on rock auto is 45 bucks however you can find this valve on Amazon for about 22 bucks and none of my local auto parts stores had this anyways so I was gonna order from rock auto for 45 but I figured well I'm gonna have to wait anyways so I might as well look or look what else is online and sure enough 23 bucks from uh, Amazon uh, with delivery next day delivery so it's coming right out of one of their local warehouses so can't beat that with a stick and yeah sure it's gonna be an aftermarket part but I mean let's get real if you go and buy this genuine Nissan part from the dealer who's making that for them you know do you think that's gonna be like that that great of a part it's a 10 year old car all right guys, so the uh, replacement part came in from Amazon it only took a couple of days to get here uh, made in China you know cheap generic replacement for this valve is what this is supposed to be cost me $23 uh, that included the uh, shipping so I just give you an idea how cheap this thing is so the question is a is it the proper part B is it a good new part because there is such thing as a defective brand new part we've seen that we've probably all experienced that at one time or another well I'm liking the looks of this that's looking like an exact match it's looking real good placement of all the clips and everything look correct so let me just show you something real quick I noticed somebody had a problem with this online they bought one of these cheap generic replacements and what they found was it looked okay but then when they went to plug in the plug they couldn't get the plug to go on and what they had noticed was that see these little ribs there's a little rib here and there's a little rib here and if you look at it straight on they're actually off they're off center they are not in straight line with each other but that's the same as on the original one and then you get two ribs on the bottom here so there was something wrong with these plastic ribs so what they were able to do in their case was they were able to just take like an exacto knife or something and shave some of the plastic off cut one of these off or whatever and actually make it still work so just keep that in mind if you're having trouble getting the plug to go on don't force it just uh you know compare it side by side and try and figure out where the culprit is and maybe you can modify it or maybe not because it's really not worth going through the 
The trouble of returning with it, only being a 23 all item, although sometimes it's really easy. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is now that I um, now that I feel pretty confident that this is the correct part, I am going to do what I did to this, which is I'm going to take my 12 volt power supply and I'm going to power this, I'm going to energize this, and I'm going to see whether or not this closes fully like this one was not. This one was leaking air when I would blow through it. This one was. Uh, this one hopefully won't. <laughs> All right, so first thing we're going to look for is when we energize it, do we hear a nice good click? Sounds good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, energize it and try and blow through it. So when I uh, energize this, it this it's a very distinct seal that's happening. So that's a good working valve. And just to recap for you guys, what this one was doing, energize this one in. It doesn't sound like much, but that would be considered a gross leak. <laughs> in the evap system Now I gotta go install this back on the car So it's not a bad idea to lubricate that o-ring right there A little bit of silicone would be fine Because you have to push this in and then twist it to lock it in and if the o-ring is dry sometimes it can damage the o-ring right here My fingers pointed to that's that clip that actually holds this in place when you rotate it up. So if you hold it around so that this um, plug is at around the 11 o'clock position or 10 o'clock position, you should be able to push it in far enough and then you swivel it over and it'll click in just like that. Hopefully you could see that. And that's what I couldn't show you when I took the old one out was to get this to disengage. There's a tab right here, you push this down and that allows you to rotate this thing about a quarter of a turn or so and then it will disengage from the canister. So now that's installed. So all that's left to do now is to reattach the vent hose to the new valve, which it just slides on. I tucked it up on top of the frame member here so because it kept getting in my way. So here it is here, and we just slide it on. Actually, let me easier for me, I think, to do it with my other hand. Oh no, I guess I got it. Okay. That's it. Now I move the stabilizer bar back into position, reattach the brackets, and uh, this part, uh, the work under the car, is done. 